If you enjoy movies that keep you on the edge of your seat, keeps your heart and your throat, your mind racing to the next possible scene, well then, hey, you're come to the right place. We're gonna take you through some of our favorite thriller movies, so you might as well grab your popcorn and hang tight. Set in Korea, this movie is Park Chan-wook's adaptation of Sarah Waters' novel Fingersmith, where a young con artist is hired to work for a wealthy Japanese heiress and persuade her to marry a handsome scam artist. But before long, the con artist ends up falling in love with the heiress and wishes to have her all to herself. Park John wook has stunningly created this sensual, historic thriller, revealing one shocking truth after another. The movie goes on to rip the lid off of misogynistic cruelty and the evils of the male gaze while pitting each remarkable character against the other in a desperate fight for freedom. This film follows a U.S. Marshal and his partner as they search for one of the missing inmates at a psychiatric facility on Shutter Island. In the process, he learns startling realities about the land, the people, and ultimately, himself. An absolute hit at the box office, this movie earned around like $294.8 million and it claimed a lot of awards and nominations to its name. When the film was released, there was a lot of buzz around the ending and whether this was a true story. Unfortunately, Shutter Island isn't based on a true story, and author Dennis Lehane created the mystery all on his lonesome. But that, that doesn't mean that there aren't some truthful elements sprinkled throughout. In David Fincher's amazing adaptation of Gillian Flynn's best-selling novel, a man discovers that his wife has vanished, leaving behind evidence of foul play and, to a surprise, evidence that he did it. As different facts about the couple's marriage surface, the husband makes seemingly innocent but highly suspicious decisions that lead him to being in engulfed in a media firestorm, along with basically everybody he knows. The first half of Gone Girl is an engine of attention, but as you might expect, there's more to the story. And Gone Girl delivers dramatic plot twists and reinterpretations of what we've already seen before. Everything about Gone Girl works. It is one of David Fincher's best films, and that is it's saying a lot. And the cherry on top is Rosamund Pike's instantly famous, Oscar-nominated, revelatory performance that really just... Holds it all together. That was a chef's kiss, by the way. Just wanted to clarify. Nightcrawler is a nasty and lightning thriller about an enthusiastic young guy who discovers that filming car disasters and selling the films to the local press might generate a lot of money. Starring none other than Jake Gyllenhaal, who is, as with most movies he's in, on another level. Shooting criminal situations might earn you a lot more money, but only if you can get there first. And we ask, what's the best way to arrive at a crime scene before everyone else? Hmm. So the moral dilemma at the end of Nightcrawler dates back to 1970s classics like Taxi Driver and Network. Yet, writer and director Dan Gilroy's film seems disturbingly modern. Sure, there's always been dark corners in the journalism industry, and there have always been people eager to do horrible things for money. However, Gyllenhaal's character, Louis Bloom, really represents an increasingly unpleasant breed of young male Americans willing to take what they believe is rightly theirs, as if greed makes them more deserving somehow, and as if their surprising inhumanity isn't a deal-breaker. In one of the most distinctive and penetrating thrillers of its kind, Gyllenhaal is horrifyingly hypnotic. Dan, or Klaus Tanje, is unable to find his wife, which is a theme in this video, man. What is, what's up with men losing their wives all the time? Anyways, he goes around asking his neighbors whether they've seen her, like anyone would have, right? From there, filmmakers Helene Catet and, and Bruno Forzani drag you into an endless nightmare vortex. Every apartment in this ancient building has a tragic story to tell, and at least one of them is undoubtedly home to a murderer. Even a weird interlude about an old couple with a hole in their ceiling appears tame in comparison to the instantly engrossing missing people plot. The Italian giallo genre, which is an operatic series of serial killer slash detective novels about extravagant beauty and absolute psychosis, has inspired the strange color of your body's tears. Catet and Forzani didn't really stop there, though, of course. They employ the giallo as a springboard for a kaleidoscopic slide into madness, breaking the genre's conventions while shooting it into orbit. The strange color of your body's tears is one of the most visually stunning 
stunning films of the century, and it's all in service of a chilling story of murder and psychological devastation. A police officer calls the management of a fast food restaurant and informs her that one of her employees is a criminal who has to be jailed. This movie sheds light on the fact that people would do anything to each other if an authority figure, even a disembodied voice on the phone, says it's acceptable. Now, where have we heard this one before? Stanford Prison Experiment? We're looking at you. The film is based on a true story about a prank call that resulted in a absolutely heinous civil rights violation. Most remarkably though, the film manages to take this unbelievable circumstance and let the audience really realize exactly how it occurred, what kind of people are convinced by a mere voice, and how simple it is to undermine all human decencies by simply shouting out loud that it's alright to ignore them. Ryan Reynolds, locked in a coffin. That's it, that's, that's the whole movie. No, no, seriously. Buried is a horrific Kafka-esque thriller from director Rodrigo Cortez about Paul Conroy, who is a civilian truck driver in the Iraq War, who wakes up buried underground with only a cell phone to help him. Miraculously, he manages to get a signal, but he's out of air and he's only got enough time to make it through a short feature film. Will the authorities be able to locate him in time? Is anyone willing to pay his ransom? How bleak and cynical can a suspense novel get? Extremely bitter and powerful powerfully cynical. Now, Reynolds plays his parts with undeniable charm. Whether he's an immortal dude or a guy locked in a box, he's char charming. He's a nice guy who doesn't deserve this, and his terrifying predicament quickly becomes a problem that other people want to solve, whether or not it actually helps the guy who's been buried alive. So there's a phone call in the middle of Buried that might just be the most depressingly plausible damnation of corporate cruelty in modern cinema. There aren't many movie heroes who are as impossibly screwed as Paul Conroy, and there aren't many movies that would revel in his interminably suspenseful torment like Buried does. Clint Eastwood is most known for his serious dramas and his western movies, but he began his career as a filmmaker with a renowned thriller by the name of Play Misty for Me, and that was it, he never looked back. Directed, produced, and scored by Clint Eastwood, Changeling is based on the true story of Christine Collins, who's played by Oscar winner Angelina Jolie, whose son goes missing in 1928 and is later found by the police. The trouble is that the child they give her is not Christine's son, and nobody believes her. Now, Christine submits some solid evidence, such as the fact that the new child is shorter than her child was, only to be told pure rubbish by a corrupt police department, such as the, the trauma shortened him. <laughs> Insane, right? And... As unbelievable as it seems, it all happened, and Eastwood's film shows this perfect, sensible lady, whose kid is still missing by the way, being undermined, gaslit, and eventually cruelly assaulted and institutionalized, simply because her presence annoys the men in authority. In real life, the Zodiac's killer's murder spree never came to a satisfying conclusion, but in David Fincher's hands, that's what makes the story so dang fascinating. Jake Gyllenhaal plays cartoonish Robert Gray Smith. Robert Downey Jr. plays a crime reporter Paul Avery, and Mark Ruffalo plays the detective David Toshi, all of whom devote their lives to solving the mysterious murders and deciphering the killer's cat and mouse letters to the newspaper, only to be met with obsession and possibly ruin. Zodiac is everything you might want in a thriller. It's a gruesome list of the killer's crimes. It's a thought-provoking drama about obsession. It's a meticulous account of a gripping investigation, and in the end, despite the fact that the film never explicitly states that the riddle's been solved, it leads to a terrible moment in which one of our protagonists comes closer than ever to finding a solution. The Silence of the Lambs, I mean, come on. It's one of the few suspense thriller horror films to win five Oscars, including Best Picture, Actor, Actress, and Director. It's directed by Jonathan Demme and stars Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins, and and it is yet another novel adaptation. It follows a young FBI trainee's attempts to peel open the psyche of a deranged cannibalistic killer in order to apprehend another serial killer on the loose. It's it's just a it's a film with real power, you know? One that depicts what it's like to be a woman in the workplace, one that delves deep into character psychosis, one that delivers thrills, chills, interesting camera work. I mean, it reinvented the close-up and and it really cemented Jonathan Depp status as one of the most important directors in the world. And that'll be a wrap-up for today's video. But we really want to know which thriller you enjoyed the most. Why won't you interact with me? Do I smell bad? Is that what it is? Let me know in the comment section below if I smell bad. Later!